Hi everybody, welcome to my channel and another art journal tutorial. This one mixes three things I love, TCW stencils, circles, and those crazy birds. So I'm starting with the stencil. This is Bubble Explosion and it's a new for 2020 stencil and I love this stencil. I've used it on another art journal page recently in a very different way and now I am simply stenciling through this stencil, keeping it in place with the yellow and two shades of green and maybe a little bit of gesso. That's what you see on the glass mat. I'm just keeping the stencil in place. If you have trouble with it moving, you can tape it down. But I'm just holding it in place. My goal here is to keep where the stencil is, to keep those circles are going to be white, where everything else is going to be infused with this lime, green, yellow mix of color. There you can see how the circles have remained white. And that's my, going to be my goal is to keep them white. Now I wanted to add some pattern to this. So I left that bubble explosion stencil in place and I'm using, this is the Harlequin stencil. And I'm using ultramarine blue, which is showing up as a dark green when it mixes with the yellow or the green below. It's giving me a darker green than if I use my hooker's green at the top. And I'm just putting pattern all over. This one is called um, Screen View. Now, I didn't have all my stencils out, and I'm just kind of flipping through them, and I'm looking for stencils with small scale patterns. And I'm kind of flipping through that. This one's called Peacock Doily. And while I love it, it you know, some of these aren't going to show through at the end. And in the process of creating, you know, as I'm going here, I do decide that I'm just basically going to use the screen view and the Harlequin stencil with the different colors, including white. White and black will always add contrast and interest to the page. But I wanted to avoid using black at this stage because I wasn't sure exactly where this was going. Other than I wanted to use this circle and try it in a different way than I did in the last video that I used this stencil, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Now, if I wanted to mask off certain areas where I did not want any of this pattern to go through, I could have taped that off. But I'm loving the effect that I have. And you can see that I've turned my stencils at different times, so the Harlequin's going left to right or top to bottom. I'm just giving this a quick dry. But this was kind of what I was going for, so I was quite happy. Now, you could do this with any colors underneath. You just want to get that contrast going. So I grabbed my fine line bottle. And this has black acrylic paint that regular heavy body black acrylic paint that I thin down with water. And it's no recipe. I just trial and error to see. And I'm just going to go around all these circles. Now, I've never had trouble with the fine line bottle with it tiring up my hand but since the surgery on my hand it is a bit of an effort and I find myself a little bit more wobbly than normal I just keep going I'm not overly concerned in the end you're not going to necessarily notice the wobbles so don't panic if yours is a little bit wobbly I find that it is easier for me to push the fine line bottle away from me I find I get a straighter, better line. So here I'm adding black. 
that little punch of black. Now, if you don't have a fine line bottle, you can use a gel pan. And I would have grabbed my Secura Glaze Black, which I love. It's dimensional, it's shiny, and it's so bold. And it just, it's pretty much fail safe. I love that thing. But I'll put a link to both the Fine Line Bottle and that Secura Glaze Pan in the description box below, as well as the names of the stencils and any links that I have. And no, I don't show you as I go through all of it. So once I had the circles, I was at, went in search of a focal image. And I came across my little crazy birds. Then it came to, okay, what colors do I want to use? I wanted a bright color. I wanted something that really stood out from the background. So I chose a pink, a blue, and then I went yellow. So basically the primary colors. So I'm just painting that off and I have a small angle brush there. I do end up painting that one pink. I just, that one is one that was in my stash and it was a bit discolored and less than perfect. So And I have these crazy birds. I have them stamped out and cut out and in my stash. So when I'm doing a page, it's really easy to just grab them, paint them whatever color I need them to be, depending on the background that I've created, and they're ready to go, whether it's an ATC, an art journal page, or even a canvas You can see how those colors are just popping off that background. Now the last bird is sitting on a, on a circle, is in a circle that's mostly green. There's no yellow. So then I decide I'm going to paint him yellow. But I know I'm going to be able to make him stand out because I'm going to do some shading and that's going to make him pop off of a background. So even if the background was the same color. I'm taking black and my angle brush and I am just adding some shading around the edges and I can see some of the line work from the stamping. And you can see the difference that makes. It just makes those the focal images more upfront. Then I grab my sentiment sheet. This is a sheet that I am in the process of developing for sale, but they have basic general words in different fonts. And I just cut out three. And I decide I want to add a little bit more interest to my bubbles, and I'm grabbing the black and my angle brush and I'm using the floating acrylic technique and I'm shading inside those bubbles. And you can see the one that I've shaded and the ones that I haven't, the difference. It's very subtle, but it does make a difference. You could select and only shade a few of them. I think I shaded all of them. Then I did, off camera, come in with a little bit of white. And along the left-hand side, I just added a little bit of white highlights using the same process. I will put a link to the floating acrylic technique video where I show you exactly how I 
use this technique in my art and I give you some um, practice so you can practice this technique and use it in your art journaling. Just going around the outside edge, the same technique. It's just added some depth to, to the page. After giving that a dry, and you can see how those circles seem to be, have suddenly gotten deeper. That's because of the shading. Now I'm just putting down the words, and I think it says, imagine one wonder. And I'm not, I can't remember what the last one is. But again, having those sentiments in my stash, ready to go, just makes it easy to finish a page and it saves time in the actual creating. Check out my build your stash videos because it shows you quick, easy ways that you can take some time and build your stash so that you can just pull on it and use it on an art journal page quickly and easily. easily. I'm gluing this down with my fluid matte medium. It's from Liquitex. I, for years, I, you know, used gel medium, and I was perfectly happy with that. And recently, I've, since I've been doing a lot of collage work, I've refound my matte fluid medium, and I'm loving that. It seems to dry quicker, and um, yeah, it's my go-to right now. I've got thin black paint and I'm just splattering with my fan brush. I just have it pre-mixed in a container because I tend to splatter a lot. And I'm just removing the tape, cleaning up the area, and, you know, whenever you splatter, you really do need to take the time to dry it or you'll end up smudging it. I grab my with this, or actually this is my Stabilo Ball pencil, and I'm just outlining, shading around the words. Explore. Explore, imagine, and wonder. So we'll go and explore the new techniques. Try this out with this, this kind of stencil. If you don't have this stencil, find a stencil with big openings and then use other stencils in the middle. I'll be looking at my stencils and seeing what other ones I have that I can do something similar with. Got my woodless charcoal pencil and I'm just shading around, just adding a little bit more, shading around the birds, adding those fine details. Close-ups of the finished page coming up. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. What color scheme would you use if you were to do this page? What would you put in the background? Leave me a comment. Get creative.